Thanks very much for having me and good morning to all of you. Uh, it's really tough to speak the last because actually most of my points have been made. Um, but I could, um, I could try to give the perspectives that I bring today to, to the platform and hopefully that will generate really good discussion and bring my perspective from the Middle East to this platform. Um, but before I do that, I think in terms of the Occupy movement, um, I have personally made speeches and I have heard people say exactly the same thing in terms of the four challenges, in terms of the politics failing us, in terms of the media failing us, in terms of civil society or the organized structure of that failing us. The response has also been the same, organized movements uh, coming together, huge number of youth leadership emerging, so on and so forth. So I think the next stage for us, movements in the Middle East should really link up with movements uh, in the Western world and see what the potential is. Right, okay, so basically if I go over, please uh, let me know with cards and so on, but I am the last speaker, so perhaps I can go over a little bit. Um, so I'm here in two hats as well. I work for Oxfam GB, um, and I'm also an Egyptian activist, and I've been personally involved in the 25th of January revolution as well as the recent uh, events in, in Cairo in November, and I've just come uh, from there. So I'm hoping to cover both aspects, both Oxfam's response to the Arab Spring since the beginning of the year, as well as uh, my activist work in Egypt. So bear with me while I try to, to go over a lot of things. Um, needless to say that I'll do my best to cover the subject from both lenses. Uh, whatever tension that arises between both only indicates the already existing tension between civil society work and activism, I think, that's presenting itself today in our world. But first, Oxfam. So Oxfam recognizes that the wave of change unfolding in the region is only beginning, is the beginning of the process of democratic transformation. The story is not over yet. History books are still being written and there is a long road ahead. We need to be clear though when we talk about the Arab Spring uh, that there are countries in a post-revolution setting like Egypt and Tunisia, countries that are still in the middle of the transition like Yemen and Syria, some that have been affected by a ripple effect like OPTI, and some that are experiencing a new fledging promise of democracy like Libya. Space for civil society engagement and involvement is a crucial cornerstone in any durable process for democratic transformation, as we all know. In Egypt and Yemen, and perhaps in OPTI as well, there is a real danger that civil society actors are being marginalized and sidelines from the reform agenda and from the debate in their countries. Arab women have also been equal partners and have been in the front line of the revolutions in their countries. And they have been a strong force and agent of change in shaping the country's reform agenda in a post-revolution setting. However, there is now a risk presenting itself across the region in terms of women's movements and their priorities being deprioritized. There's also the threat of the Islamists rising in most of the countries. And so that is in a direct conflict with women's movements and women's rights. And I bring up women movements here because Oxfam, as well as my personal view actually, uh, view both the women movements as well as civil society movements as part of the larger uh, domain that we actually engage with and part of the larger context. So historically, in most of the countries across the region, space for civil society organizations to speak out in a wide range of issues, including lack of social, political, economic rights, has been strictly limited. You would think that after the revolution and the new found voice of the uprisings that they have actually um, taken most of the restrictions out and, and, and it's a limitless kind of uh, atmosphere in both countries or in, across the region. However, that is not what we're experiencing and that there is more limitations after the uprisings being imposed on civil society organizations. For example, over the summer in Egypt, Serious government pressures on Egyptian NGOs, including anti-foreign -fo funding rhetoric, has been observed. In August 2011, 26 human rights organizations and NGOs, including much of Oxfam's partners, have published a statement against these restrictions and accusations of implementing foreign agendas. 
Similar pressures are also being felt by civil society in Israel and OPTI, where the Israeli Knesset has recently passed legislation that restricts the abilities of human rights organizations to protest human rights violations and to obtain <coughs> funds from foreign governments. In Egypt, Oxfam and its partners have formed an Egyptian policy reference group which aims to coordinate national global advocacy actions. In addition, Oxfam is also forming a coalition of NGOs that are going to be the interface between the civil society organizations and the League of Arab States or the Egyptian government. So we're really making that link in terms of lobbying and advocacy and trying to bring on change in the policy level. <clears throat> 